This is Shannon with Florabella Collection, and today I'll be taking you through how I edited this image using the new Florabella Color Play Actions for Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Here I'll be working in Photoshop Elements 10, but there's also a video for Photoshop CS2 through CS6. So let's get started. Here's my final product, and here is my before image. Now, the first thing I like to do when working with this type of image is I like to zoom in and correct any obvious blemishes or flaws. Okay, so I'm going to click Control plus or Command plus on a Mac. I'm just going to zoom in and my brush is way too big. I'm going to use my bracket key to make my brush smaller. And to remove these blemishes, I'm going to be using the spot removal, spot healing brush, excuse me. And you just click right here. It's a Band-Aid. Looks like a Band-Aid. And the spot healing brush tool is here. And then you just click. But the first thing you always need to do is make a copy of your background. So Control or Command J will make a copy of that layer. And you don't want to work on your background in case you make a mistake. And you always just want to keep that intact. So I'm going to be using um, Content Aware, that's available in this version of Photoshop Elements, otherwise use Proximity Match. And I'm just going to click. What this does is it uses the surrounding areas to heal the blemish. Okay, so I can just click whichever blemish. I'm going to leave her freckles because they're cute and they're natural. And that looks good. If I were to really want to do retouching, I would use the Retouch and Makeover set of actions. But here I just, she's young, and I don't want to do a lot of retouching to her face. I want her to look natural. Okay, so again, I'm going to duplicate this layer. Control or Command J. And now I'm going to just... Uh, minimalize a little bit the dark circles under her eyes and the way I'm going to do that is with the healing brush it's right underneath the spot healing brush and what you do on that tool is you're going to sample from a healthy area of skin and then you're going to brush over the part that you want to correct so the way you sample is you click alt on a PC or option on a Mac click once and then move up to where you want to erase. Now, I forgot to mention that you should go to your brush right here with the little arrow. Take your hardness all the way down. You want it to be a soft brush. That way it'll blend a little prettier. Okay. Now, you don't really want to take away all of the under eye. That's before and that's after. That's a little bit too much. And that's why we have it on its own layer so that we can decrease it. I usually decrease it all the way down and then inch it back up. And that looks perfect there. You still want some shadow because it makes it look natural. Now what I'm going to do is zoom back out and I'm going to flatten. You can right click and choose flatten or for your convenience there's a flatten action in the set. And now I'm going to go over to my color play set um, and I'm going to play a base action. The base action will do all of your clean editing for you. And here I'm going to choose the clean base. I also really love subtle color and matte film as a base for um, the add-on artistic actions. So here's your base. It also includes a black and white layer that you can easily see what you um, prefer to edit, black and white or color. Um, I love the black and white on this image, but for this purpose, I'm going to be doing color. And now I'm go I'm just going to leave everything as it. You can lighten, you can darken, you can play with the contrast, the clarity, your shadows, your highlights. But I think that that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and add an add-on action on top. I'm going to add pink honey, which is one of my favorite actions in the set. And I'm going to decrease the opacity of pink honey. I'm already on the group layer just a little bit, down to about 70, 72. And I think that looks really pretty. I love the tones with pink honey on this image. And the very top of pink honey, there's, a, uh, there's an option to dehaze. There's a layer that you can click on, and it will dehaze for you. But I kind of like this hazy. I'm just going to decrease that a little bit. Keep it on about eight. 
And right on top of this, I'm going to use what I used on most of my models, and that is the blush brush. I'm going to play that twice, okay, because I'm going to add some rosiness to her cheeks and to her lips, and I want those on separate layers so I have more control. Okay, I'm going to zoom in using my controller command and the plus key, and I'm just going to make sure that I have a soft brush. My opacity is at 100. I can decrease it a little, but you can always decrease the opacity of your layer. Okay, and I'm just going to add some pretty rosy blush to her cheeks. I can tone that down in a minute. Now I'm going to go down to the second one, and I'm going to add some rosiness to her lips. Intensify her lipstick there. Okay, there's not a lot of color in this image, so I need to add a little bit more. And I like her lips. The blush is a little much, so I'm going to take it all the way back down to zero, and then I'm going to ease it up until I think it looks perfect. Keep it at about 44 there. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and flatten at this point because I'm going to run the detail brush. The detail brush helps to richen and reveal details in your image, um, such as eyelashes. Now, she's already wearing mascara, but if you brush this over her lashes, it's really going to add almost a mascara effect. And I like to do that. You don't have to go into your retouch set. Everything is right here for you on an edit like this. Again, I don't want it to be like that's a little too much. I just want it to be subtle. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. That looks pretty. You can also um, decrease the opacity, and you can just the outer parts of the irises. Just make the eyes pop a little bit more if you want. Um, you know, to really work on the eyes, I'd go into my retouch set, but I just don't think we need to with this one. So again, I'm going to flatten. And now I'm going to maybe just see if adding a little bit more color with the color brush will work with this image, and I think it will. So I'm going to bring my opacity way up so I can see what I'm doing. And just going to make the ocean and her scarf just a little bit more dramatic by painting on a little bit more color pop. I stay away from the skin on this one because her skin's already rich. Okay, that's before and after. Just a little bit more colorful. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Now within the color brush, you, you can really control your color. You can saturate it more, make it richer. Um, increase the color pop. You can soften your reds or your yellows or your greens. I like to do that with grass. Okay, I'm going to flatten again. And now I'm going to show you one last thing, and that is the definition palette. The definition palette is an interesting tool. Um, you can use it to dodge and burn. You can use it to really define your image. You paint with either black or white. When you paint with black, you're burning your image. Now that's just way too much. I'm going to say edit, undo brush tool. I'm going to bring that opacity way down. If you want to add some sort of vignette to your image, it's a real easy way to do it. If you want to just darken or richen something. Okay, so I'm going to bring that just a little bit more, about 43%. I'm going to flatten, and then I'm going to play it again because I'm going to show you a little trick that I use. I use this especially if somebody has really dark eyes. You run the definition palette, but you change the blending mode from soft light to overlay. And then you click X on your keyboard to change, or, or you can click the little arrow here, to change your foreground to white. You're going to be painting with white on her eyes. Okay, make my brush size smaller. You can do that with the bracket keys also. Here I'm going to take my opacity down a little bit because I don't want her to have zombie eyes. Okay, you can also just paint on your catch lights. I can already tell this is going to be a little bit too intense, a little bit too bright in the eyes. So I'm going to bring it all the way down 
and just ease it up a little bit. Zoom out and see the difference. A little bit less. Okay. And again, we're going to flatten. Now, you don't need to flatten when you play your bass and you're playing all these add-ons on top. should be no need to flatten in between those. That way you can adjust their opacities and create recipes. Or you can always use the recipe maker, which will play clean bass and all of these actions on top of clean bass. And then all you do is simply adjust the opacities of each of those actions on top of your clean bass. It's uh, really fun, and it's a great way to get to know your actions, too, and how they work with different types of images. So lastly, I'm going to show how to easily convert any image to black and white. Here in this color play set, we have a black and white conversion and tones action. And that's going to convert it for you. And from there, you can um, keep it as is, which I think is beautiful. Or you could add a blue-gray tone, which is a pretty popular look, or a soft vintage tone. Um, this kind of actually makes it a little more matte looking too. The matte style is very popular now and this set also does include a matte toner um, as well as a couple other actions that create a matte finish such as matte film and uh, 1975 brownish and earth. So there you have it. Here is your color and your black and white. Um, so thanks for watching, and you can find Florabella actions and digital resources for photographers at florabellacollection.com. Thanks.